Welcome to the Heavy Spoiler Show. I'm your host, Steve. Steven. Who the, who the hell is Steven? Worked for you for like a year, mate. Did a lot of the edits. A Steven, eh? Yeah, well, what I want to talk about is all the upcoming projects that are confirmed and rumoured to be in the works. What we're going to do is go through them all one by one and let you know what is on the horizon and when we can expect them. So without further ado, let's split them right up the middle, just like Wanda did Captain Carter, into confirmed and rumoured projects, because I can do this all day. You son of a bitch. Now the first upcoming film is Black Panther Wakanda Forever, slated for an 11th November release later this year. Obviously the big thing hanging over this movie is the loss of Chadwick Boseman in the iconic role and I'm really interested to see how they handle this whole situation. It's of course a massive loss to the comic book movie community, it's devastating that he's gone and I just hope that they handle it with the respect that it deserves. Now because of his passing there's going to be a whole host of characters that are introduced to this movie including Riri Williams and someone of course also needs to take up the mantle. There's also the introduction of Namor and he's going to be bringing Atlantis with him so we're going to finally see how that compares to DC's Aquaman. Ryan Coogler is still behind the picture and after the success of the first one I'm expecting this to really knock it out of the park as well and it's one of my most anticipated films of the next couple of years. Next, we have the one hour Halloween special Werewolf by Night, coming to Disney Plus later this year, starring Gail Garcia Bernal, still not sure of an exact release date for this one yet. Well, you're fired then. However, filming wrapped in April and it definitely sounds like one to keep an eye out for. We also have another Disney Plus special hitting our screens this year, in the form of the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, once again with James Gunn at the helm. With this special set to take place between the events of Thor Love and Thunder and Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3, I'm really looking forward to seeing the return of this bunch of chumps. Then we move to 2023 and we have the Marvel set for release. Based on the characters Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel and Monica Rambeau, it is intended to be the sequel to Captain Marvel and a continuation of the Disney Plus series Miss Marvel. After that we have Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3, scheduled to be released in the United States on May the 5th, 2023. We'll see the return of the team alongside Sylvester Stallone and Will Poulter will be entering the franchise as Adam Warlock. Gonna be amazing getting this character finally involved in the MCU after the tease in the post credit scene of the last Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is scheduled to be released in the United States on February the 17th, 2023. Seeing the return of Peyton Reed at the helm and Paul Rudd as Scott Lang alongside the rest of the cast returning, however we also know we will be seeing the return of Jonathan Majors as Kang the Conqueror after last seeing him in Loki as he who remains. Bill Murray has also been cast as an undisclosed villain role which I can't wait to find out more about. After that we're going to be getting Blade. Penciled in for a 2023 release, this will be the first time the character has come back to the big screen since Wesley Snipes played him in 2004's amazing film, underrated classic, underrated gem, Blade Trinity. Oh yeah. Now Mahershala Ali will be playing the character in the MCU after debuting as a voice at the end of the post credit scene in The Eternals 2021. Now slated for a 2024 release is Deadpool 3, which will officially see the Merc with the Mouth introduced to the MCU. And yes, it is Disney, and yes, it will officially be rated R in keeping with the previous movies. It's still in development, but Ryan Reynolds did suggest in August 2021 that the movie would start filming in 2022. We also know that Reynolds will reunite with Free Guy and the Adam Project director, Sean Levy, on the threequel, as Levy will be directing. I can't wait to see how the character is brought into the MCU. In 2024, we're also going to see the return of the Fantastic Four, after John Krasinski's Illuminati cameo in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. He hasn't been officially cast yet, but I'm sure everyone, well most people, are eager to see him once more reprising the role of Reed Richards. He went out like a bowl of wet spaghetti last time round, and it's only right that he gets to redeem himself. Surely, yeah, give the guy another chance. Captain America 4 is another project confirmed to be in the works, with a possible 2024 release, following on from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series. On August the 18th, 2021, it was reported that Anthony Mackie had closed a deal to star in the film. It was also reported that the film would begin production in May 2022. Shang-Chi 2 was also confirmed in December 2021, although it doesn't have a release date yet. Marvel Studio have already mapped out its Phase 4 movies, so we can put a ring or 10 around that one for now. Whilst nothing has been confirmed, it seems likely that both Simu Lee and Aquafina will be in Shang-Chi 2, especially given the way the first movie ended. We also know that the Ten Rings will return, which means Shia Ling will be back as well. 
On November 29, 2021, Amy Pascal confirmed that Sony Pictures and Marvel Studios were set to begin development on a fourth Spider-Man film. She revealed that we can expect more Spider-Man films starring Tom Holland, set within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. On December 18, 2021, Kevin Feige officially confirmed that a fourth Spider-Man film, which will be part of a new trilogy, was in active development. Now, we move on to the confirmed TV series lined up over the next few years, starting with She-Hulk Attorney at Law. This is scheduled to debut on Disney Plus on August 17th, 2022, and it will consist of nine episodes, concluding on October 12th. After receiving a bit, bit of stick online yeah, for some dodgy CGI in the first trailer, I am actually interested to see how she -Rec comes across once it's been released. I Am Groot, the photorealistic animated series, is set to hit our screens later this year on Disney Plus 2, with each episode set to follow baby Groot as he grows up and goes on adventures with new and unusual characters. The official artwork was released recently and has been doing the rounds across the internet, showing baby Groot chilling in shades and headphones with a cocktail. And with James Gunn serving as an executive producer on the series, Feige said he was excited about a planned story for Groot to return to his home planet X. Now Secret Invasion is set to explore a world in which the newly introduced Skrulls have begun infiltrating Earth. Already confirmed to have cast Amelia Clark, Olivia Colman and Kingsley Benadire as the main villain, it's going to be exciting to see how this is brought to the screen. We're also going to be getting back Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury and Ben Mendelsohn as Talos, aka everyone's favourite Skrull. He was of course responsible for introducing the Skrulls into the wider MCU and in my opinion, Mendelsohn gave a brilliant performance. He's going to be teaming back up with Jackson's Nick Fury once more and it'll surely pave the way for more memorable moments in the upcoming series. While there's no trailer yet for Echo, Marvel Studios did release some art for the title character. The image was released with an announcement that the show was currently in production as of May 2022 and would drop sometime in 2023. It will be interesting to see how this one pans out after last seeing her at the end of Hawkeye having apparently shot Wilson Fisk. Now, according to reports, Ironheart will start filming in June 2022. Rumours are saying that Riri Ironheart Williams will make her live-action debut in Black Panther Wakanda Forever on November 11th and this means the series could possibly hit streaming late November or sometime in December. After years of standing by as the sidekick of Tony Stark, Rhodey, aka War Machine, is finally getting his moment to shine. Don Cheadle will star in Armor Wars, yet another upcoming live action series over on Disney+, Plus, possibly in 2023. Now when What If Season 2 was first announced on Disney Plus Day on November 12th, nothing specific had been revealed about its release date other than the season was coming soon. However, executive producer Brad Windenborn did state back in August 2021 that they hope to release a new season annually. The second season of Loki was officially announced on July 14th, 2021. It's scheduled to premiere on Disney+. Plus. During the Disney's Upfronts 2022 presentation, Feige took to the stage to talk about what the MCU has in store. He revealed that season two of Loki will begin production in the next few weeks. More importantly, he confirmed that the entire main cast is coming back for the second installment. Absolutely loved the first season, so can't wait for that one. Okay, so X-Men 97 was announced on Disney Plus Day, and this will see the return of the 1992 animated X-Men series. As far as we know, the plot will continue where the original series left off, with the majority of the voice actors returning to their roles. As a huge fan of the original series, I used to watch it all the time, yeah? I can't wait to see this one, especially with that Patrick Stewart entrance in the Multiverse of Madness. He of course came riding in in his yellow hover chair, and just getting the little notes from that theme tune really made that scene stand out for me. It's going to be interesting to see how it connects to Multiverse of Madness and whether that's the same character or not, but either way, I'm really hyped to see this series return. Agatha House of Harkness is another upcoming Disney Plus spin-off series following Agatha Harkness from WandaVision. During Disney Plus Day 2021, we heard that a new series called Agatha House of Harkness was in development for Disney Plus, with Katherine Hahn set to reprise her role as the title character. Now, there's also, as of now, an untitled Wakanda series confirmed with Danny Guerrera as the only name attached so far. Ryan Coogler is said to be developing the TV show set in the Kingdom of Wakanda for Disney+. Plus. However, no further details for the upcoming spin-off series are currently known at this point. The animated series Spider-Man Freshman Year is on its way to Disney+, Plus and will take MCU fans back to Peter Parker's early high school days. 
Back in November of 2021, Spider-Man Freshman Year was officially announced during Disney Plus Day. According to reports, the series will follow a freshman aged Peter Parker on his way to becoming Spider-Man. It will be based on the character's iconic comic book roots. Now Marvel Zombies is another one fans have been clamouring for and we were given a teaser for it in the What If episode. The blurb for the series states that it reimagines the Marvel Universe as a new generation of heroes battle against an ever spreading zombie scourge. As a big zombie movie fan, I'm very interested to see how this one develops. Right, with all those confirmed releases out of the way, now we can delve deep into the rumour mill and chuck some projects out there that could be on the horizon. As always, take these with a pinch of salt, but my guess is there will be some definites in here, I'm sure, alongside some surefire Ralph Boners. So, will we be likely to see a Nova movie in the future? Well, yes, and this one isn't so much of a rumour anymore, having recently been announced that the Moon Knight Rider will be bringing the character into the MCU. At this point, we don't know if Nova will be a series or movie, but excitement is already building up. We of course had the Nova Core feature heavily in Guardians of the Galaxy and I'm guessing that the series is going to build upon that. There is rumoured to be a World War Hulk project in the works and it is said to be a film adaptation of the World War Hulk graphic novel. While Marvel has yet to confirm the project, the rumour mill is going wild and it's such a massive story that I hope it gets brought to the big screen. Now several characters from Marvel Comics Thunderbolt are already in the MCU and with Val, you know, she went on a bit of a recruiting spree and brought in former Captain America John Walker whilst renaming him US Agent. Black Widow also revealed that Yelena Belova works for her too and there was an announcement by Deadline recently that the film is officially in production. My guess is that Baron Zemo is going to be the person leading them and will also get the Abomination and several other characters that are slowly starting to come in the Marvel Universe. I'm looking at you Taskmaster. After the cameo appearances of the Illuminati in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness were dispatched quicker than a bowl of mom's spaghetti, I really should stay tight-lipped on this one, but could we potentially be seeing them return in a project of their own? With characters such as Reed Richards, Professor X and Captain Carter unveiled and destroyed in the blink of an eye, it would be great to see them again and the possibility of redeeming themselves. Now, Eternals 2 was certainly set up towards the end of the first movie. We didn't get it confirmed but you know there were teases towards what would be happening in the future. That's mainly because the credit scene revealed we could have a watermelon sugar burst of star power in the form of Harry Styles who showed up as Eros to every girl in my cinema's you know delight. They might have been screaming for me but they were probably screaming for him. Now he was joined by the extremely you know it did look a bit crap the CGI on Pip the Troll but he was voiced by Pan Oswald, who has made a number of good performances in the Marvel Universe already. Now they could also well be joined by the Black Knight as the post credit scene sees our Jon Snow, sorry Dane Whitman, going to touch the Ebony Blade. Now we knew that it was only a matter of time before mutants were part of the MCU. After seeing Patrick Stewart appear as Professor X in Doctor Strange 2, every X-Men fan is theorising how we will see the mutants join the MCU. As of yet, there's nothing concrete, but we pretty much know it's coming sooner or later. Now, Avengers Endgame also teased the introduction of Namor, as Okoye mentioned that there were underwater earthquakes off the coast of Africa. We pretty much have it confirmed that the villain of Wakanda Forever will be Namor the Submariner, and this of course ties back to the prior movie. The character has been rumoured to be in the film for well over a year now, with actor Tino Cuerda rumoured to be playing the role. Rumours of a Silver Surfer project could also be on the horizon, with stories of the character set to appear in the Nova project, and or also the Fantastic Four movie. We last saw him on the screen in 2007's Fantastic Four, The Rise of the Silver Surfer, and the less said about that one the better. Now Daniel RPK has revealed that a Ten Ring series is in development at Marvel Studios. He added that Shang-Chi's sister Xia Ling will be the series lead and this could give room to expand on the history of the rings and it also looks like it could serve as a direct follow up to the first Shang-Chi movie. Next we have Ghost Rider and Johnny Blaze has become somewhat of a cult favourite over the years. After the depiction by Nicolas Cage, fans are always calling for more, but will we see a series for the character? Could it be tied into the Midnight Suns? Who would be taking up the role? It's all just speculation at this point, but it would be great to see the character return. Now potential Young Avengers team members have been sort of dropping in in the MCU since as far back as Ant-Man. We had Cassie Lang of course appear in that film and a lot of the MCU shows have been centred around setting up these characters. This has led to characters like Kate Bishop and of course Billy and Tommy in WandaVision. Potentially this could all be building towards a Young Avenger team in the future, which I definitely hope to see. Marvel Studios is potentially developing a project based on the classic character Nomad. 
Having recently trademarked the phrase Marvel Studios Nomad, alongside lots of terms for other new projects, this looks like something that is more than likely also on the horizon. It could be introduced as a spin-off from The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, with possibly either Bucky or Wyatt Russell's US agent taking on the Nomad persona. Now rumours say that one of the shows currently in development that Marvel has yet to announce is a Secret Warriors series. There was a recent animated movie that also played on this too, and the team included Quake and Ms. Marvel, with Squirrel Girl, America Chavez, Patriot, Inferno, Exile, Captain Marvel and Hala also showing up. This has got a great cast of characters in it, and potentially we could be seeing something similar in live action soon. With the new season of Daredevil looking likely on Disney+, Plus, and that cameo appearance from Charlie Cox as that really good brick-catching lawyer Matt Murdock in No Way Home, fans are desperate to see the return of this character as part of the MCU. It's only a matter of time, but will we see him up against Wilson Fisk once more? Let's hope so. Now there are a few characters from the Midnight Suns that are popping up in the MCU and that's kind of getting me excited about their arrival. There's people like Moon Knight, Blade, Doctor Strange and also potentially Ghost Rider and even your boy Morbius, yeah, bring, bring him in the MCU. I say that happens, yeah, which let's admit we all want to see because the movie made more billion dollars. Feige's going to see that and realise it's more been time to bring him into the franchise. This would pop open the multiverse again and it could spit him out into the MCU which would be, it'd be the stuff of dreams, guys. Now finally, apparently a Wolverine anthology TV series is reportedly in the works at Marvel Studios. Very little is known about this project at the moment, but early signs do indicate that it could be a major part of Marvel's mysterious plans for bringing mutants into the MCU. Reportedly opening in the 80s, following the Weapon X storyline, we could potentially see each episode cover a major part in the timeline, bringing us fully up to date. But that's all just speculation at this point. It sounds great in theory and I can't wait to see if and how they will approach this one, and to find out who will be taking up the iconic role. And lastly is Wonder Man, which was just recently announced. First teased that in the making of WandaVision, he is reportedly going to be getting his own show very soon. Anyway, that finishes up the confirmed and rumoured slate of the movies and shows in the works by Marvel Studios and Disney+. If we missed something out or you've heard any other rumours then feel free to let us know in the comments below. Also let us know which of these you're looking forward to the most and how you see things tying in. Huge thank you to Steven for making his own video and hopefully we'll get you back doing more stuff like this in the future. If you want him to keep his job hit the thumbs up button and also don't forget to subscribe for videos like this almost every day. If you want something else to watch we have a video on screen right now just for you and with that out of the way thanks for clicking this. We'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.